Adventure Sync? Hmm. Yeah. I believe it when I see it. They've been touting it since July from the San Diego Casters Convention. They talked about it in September, promised it then. Yeah, I don't know when it's actually going to come out. Turn page. Glad I'm wrong. Well, wonders never cease. Hello, my witches and wizards. This is Professor Rowan. Uh, as you can see, the uh, rain has really increased the level of the river and a little worried about flooding, but it hasn't happened yet, so... We just got the details of the newest Brilliant event, and honestly, kind of glad that the Adventure Sync is coming out with it, though I don't honestly know how well it will work, but that's for a later time. First, let's talk about the Brilliant event. I hope you enjoyed and was able to finish the last Brilliant event. I finally unlocked the last port key I needed, a half hour before the brilliant event ended. So, cutting it a little close for me. Um, that was for the bonus challenge. My life mate didn't even get to finish the bonus challenge because of getting the port keys unlocked. It's not that we're not active, it's that we're not often with our cellular telephone devices. So I'm hoping that the new adventure fit will help in some way. Maybe it will link to his watch. Maybe I can get a watch to link to. I don't know. Birthdays are coming up. But enough of that. Let's talk about the brilliant event that's coming up. The Darkest of Times Part 2 is going to be starting on February 4th and running through February 11th. Just like the first half, it will have 3K port keys, which will be taking you to Dumbledore's office. Just remember that the 3k port keys you picked up for the first part will only give you the rewards for the first part. This being week two, you would have to collect the port keys this week for receiving the foundable for part two, week two. Is that making sense? I hope so. Just like last week, the Barufio's brain elixirs will be lasting for one hour. And thanks to those brain elixirs, I was able to go up yet another level during the last event, so... I'm hoping that trend continues. This event will also be giving you a free store pack with one silver key and 25 energy. You're going to want to hold on to that silver key. We've got a lot of port keys to open. Now before we get into the spoilery stuff, let's talk about what you will be finding during these darkest times. There's only one additional foundable that you will be finding in the wild. That's going to be the pensive, or a brilliant pensive. Just like last time, the Brilliant Pensive will be joined in the wild with the ones from week one, Dumbledore and Fawkes. Um, hopefully we'll be able to find the Pensive in the wild, and hopefully when we have requirements for high or higher foundables, the Pensive will count, since Dumbledore and Fawkes were only medium threat levels. Speaking of Dumbledore, you will be finding a young version of Dumbledore, as well as Memory Vials and Lemon Sherbert in your tasks. The Brilliant Port Keys will be giving you the Griffin Statue, and you'll be needing five of them. Also, the Rune Stones will be giving you a Brilliant Deluminator, and you'll be needing three of those. Now, the Rune Stones you got from the first week of the event are useful in this week as well, and will get you the Deluminators, but I'd hold off of them for a moment, and you'll find out why in a bit. And now, this is your spoiler warning. Spoilers! The first task is fairly straightforward. Return five of the pensives, hoping that you can find the pensives past all of the Dumbledores and Falks. Return five of the pensives, that will get you three restricted section books. Use two potions and brew two potions, both of those getting you 25 brilliant family XP. The using potion and brewing potion is relatively simple. You can probably use the potions getting the pensives, and, well, brewing a potion is part of your daily tasks anyway. 
For completing the first task, you will get 500 wizarding XP, the memory vial registry image, another key, a portrait sticker also of the memory vial, and a portrait lens of a coat and scarf of young Dumbledore. For quest two of four is where the port key joy begins. You will need to unlock five port keys. Doing so will get you 15 brilliant family XP. Use one brain elixir for 300 wizarding XP. And return seven foundables of any family. And that will give you 20 brilliant XP. The rewards for completing part two, which I'm assuming is going to take the longest part, is opening all of those port keys. But the rewards for part two are 25 brilliant family XP, three restricted tomes, a gilded ornate frame, your lemon sherbet registry picture, and six leaping toadstool ingredients. Hmm, think they want you to be brewing some more brain elixirs. Now with part two, it can only be assumed that having the port keys there is to try to encourage you to be using the adventure sink. For those of us who aren't allowed to carry their phones during the day, that might make things a little bit more complicated. But hopefully that having Adventure Sync will make that easier, I hope. Now the last two tasks are very synchronous. They work well with each other, or their tasks work well with them within the quest, if that makes sense. For quest three, you need to use two dark detectors, which will give you 20 brilliant family XP. You also need to cast Arresto Momentum three times. That will give you 500 wizarding XP. You also need to gather five high or higher, fret, higher threat foundables, which will also give you 500 wizarding XP. So a thousand wizarding XP and using those dark detectors should help you find the higher, higher threat foundables. For completing the third task, you shall receive 25 brilliant family XP, three restricted section books, Dumbledore's Griffin portrait sticker, two unicorn hair ingredients, and three hermit crab ingredients, which we all know I don't use the dawdle drop very often, so not as excited about that as I am the unicorn hair, which has been scarce lately. Quest four is also very synchronous with itself or the world around it. For quest four, you need to use three darkest of times rune stones. Remember how I told you earlier you need to Hold on to those rune stones. This would be why. Use three of those darkest of time rune stones. That will give you one spell book. You need to defeat 10 foes in a wizarding challenge, which hopefully using those three rune stones, you're able to defeat 10 foes using those three rune stones. That will give you 25 brilliant family XP. You also need to use seven potions, which one would assume you could do in the fortresses if you were, say, taking on higher level or more challenging ones that would also guarantee you your 10 foes. And that will give you 25 brilliant family XP. See how it all works together? For finishing the fourth and final official quest, you will receive 50 gold, six restricted section books, one young Dumbledore for your registry page, one pensive frame for your portrait, and 750 wizarding XP. And now on for our bonus challenge. Your bonus tasks are as follows. Return 30, yes, three zero, brilliant family foundables. It doesn't matter which one of the three, which is handy, but 30 of them. For this, you will get a portrait lens with Dumbledore with short hair. Return 10 high or higher threat foundables and that will give you two dottle draughts. Woo. And unlock 10 port keys, which will get you three spell books. But 10 port keys. Oh, and not nearly as many keys given to you as rewards this time as in week one. So, man, my gold key's gonna get rusty. Wait a minute, gold keys don't rust and using them keeps them from rusting. My gold key's gonna wear out. This is very similar to the one that we had last time. Remember to make sure that you're using the gold key on your lower distance items, like the two and three K port keys. The rewards for the bonus challenge are 2,000 wizarding XP, 
100 brilliant XP, and one achievement badge. Though this time they didn't tell me what the achievement would be. I think they may have heard how I mocked them last time. On to the tips and tricks on how to get this all accomplished. The main hang-up for the whole thing has usually been getting the port keys done. However, now we're, we have slots for 10 port keys instead of just eight, and hopefully the Adventure Sync will be helping. In order to activate Adventure Sync, make sure that you have either Apple Fit or Google Fit, what, whatever one works best with your cellular telephone device, that program also needs to be on your cell, cellular telephone device to give that information to Wizards Unite. It tracks your steps, like a pedometer that I used to use back in the 80s. My hope is that we will see by the time the event starts that it works well and that it will help us get through those parts as quickly and painlessly as possible. If you haven't noticed yet, pretty much all brilliant events or all events in general that have a task list involve brewing potions of either general or specific kind, using potions of either a general or a specific kind, and unlocking port keys, as well as collecting foundables, but of a general or specific kind, but they usually go into at least one of those four categories. So ways I prepare for brilliant events is always making sure that I have enough ingredients to brew whatever potions I'm going to want to brew or need to brew, make sure that I have a bunch of port keys actually finished and ready to be open so that when the brilliant port keys are available on the map, I can collect all of the ones I had before, gather all the new port keys I need at once, and then I have them all there and ready. I don't need to sporadically find them. I know exactly when I'm ready for a new port key, I'll have one there ready for me. I always, always have my gold key going. It's never not in use. So hopefully that will help with this. I will admit I, I collected a bunch of 2Ks um, in preparation for this event, or I will be collecting a bunch of 2Ks so that they can help me because the 3Ks are sometimes just a little bit too long of a walk, especially in this rain. What about you? What do you do to prepare for a brilliant event or any event for that matter? Please leave that in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions, concerns, um, anything else that you want to share with the community, please put it in the comments. As always, liking, subscribing, sharing really does help us out. Again, a shout out to the patrons. I've been really bad about gifts lately because honestly, I'm not getting good gifts to share, so... But I'm going to keep working on that. And as always, my witches and wizards, keep your eyes peeled, your ears open, and your wands ready. Thank you.